Excellent. Thank you, Radcliffe. <laughs> okay. Um, eliminate mouse cursor, please. Thank you. Okay. Here we go. I 
Hello? Is this on? Can everyone hear me? All right. Good evening. My name is Dr. Cosmo Genovese. I come to you from the University of Ohio. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about COFRAG, a complete framework for anti-gravity. So what is anti-gravity? Well, to understand anti-gravity, first you must understand gravity. Gravity was discovered around 1709 by Sir Isaac Newton, although as a historical footnote, there is some doubt as to whether it was in fact Gottfried Leibniz who made the discovery first. Um, Newton uh, discovered that gravity um, is an attractive force between rounded bodies, such as the Earth and the Moon, or um, as in the famous story, um, between the apple falling from the tree and Newton's head. Research on gravity was further um, uh, brought forward by Einstein in 1960 when he discovered that gravity is related to curvature in space-time. Um, however, that study um, has not been revisited um, in over 50 years, and um, recent results in string theory have cast some of Einstein's uh, discoveries into doubt. So this, are, this is certainly an area that requires more study. So now that you understand gravity, what is anti-gravity? Well, um, as we know from Newton's first law of motion, for every force, there is an equal and opposite force. So for gravity, gravity is a force. Therefore, there must be an opposing force, which we call anti-gravity. Now, if that is not clear to you, then this illustration will make it clear. Here we have a rounded body, here we have the force of gravity, and in the opposite direction we have anti-gravity. As I mentioned, um, we see this in practice every day um, in the relationship between the Earth and Earth's moon. Um, the gravitational force coming from the Earth attracts the moon and um, keeps it in orbit around the Earth. However, the reason that the moon does not come crashing into the Earth is because of the force of anti-gravity. We also see this coming into play in um, one of the most common modes of transportation today, the airplane. Okay? The airplane, of course, is naturally inclined to fall to Earth. However, um, the force of anti-gravity is what keeps it up. But um, anti-gravity is still poorly understood um, the airplane is actually a primitive method of harnessing anti-gravity. Um, the reason for that is that we all know that airplanes need to have forward velocity to um, be able to take advantage of anti-gravity. Um, we have yet to invent an airplane that can remain aloft while standing still. So as you can see, there is still much work to be done in the field of anti-gravity. So this brings me to the motivation for my work. Increasingly, the need to transport humans and materials around the world is becoming more. Moreover, traditional sources of fuel are becoming depleted. Um, we are running out of fossil fuels. We are running out of wind power, solar power. Um, we need to um, come up with new forms of energy, as you all know, to help prevent global warming. Now, this has been exacerbated by the recent widespread adoption of the internet. So, how many of you have ordered something from the internet before? Right, we all have. Um, so, with one click, um, you can order something on the internet which then needs to be shipped to you. So, this has drastically increased the amount of transportation that is happening all over the world. Um, there's also been an increasingly per pervasive use of airplanes, um, which we can see from uh, the number of shoe searches on airplanes increasing exponentially um, in the past 15 years. Um, so what we need to do in this research is bridge the gap between the state of the practice, um, our airplanes, our transportation system, and the state of the art, what we really know how to do with science. So. Um, this is the 
ultimate goal. This is kind of our holy grail. Um, we would like to be able to harness anti-gravity to be able to have more efficient transportation systems. So to that end, um, of course, we can't make that all in one great leap. So I am proposing um, an incremental and logical step forward, which is COFRAG, which stands for the Complete Framework for Anti-Gravity. Okay? And um, that's in uh, contrast to partial frameworks that have been proposed in the past. So COFRAG provides a baseline for prioritizing and assessing research on anti-gravity. Okay, this is extremely important because we need to mitigate the risk in um, performing research studies. We need to um, make sure that we can enable fine-grade analysis um, in our studies, and um, COFRAG pro uh, provides that for us. Um, it is component-based, so you can plug in um, any combination of scientific theories um, into this framework, and it is context-driven. Um, unlike many other frameworks, this framework takes into account the context in which research studies are performed. Okay? Um, so COFRAG, basically what it does is it formalizes um, the terminologies and methodologies that are used um, in researching anti-gravity. <laughs> Okay, so, pardon me. Here is a roadmap for the rest of the talk. Okay, so I already went through the motivation. Um, I'm going to talk about the uh, framework. Um, we're going to go through the, the, the components of the framework. Um, we're going to go over some definitions that you need to understand what's going on here. Um, and I'll present a formal functional model um, of taxonomies and heuristics for anti-gravity. Um, and finally, I'll present some empirical results um, that uh, my colleagues and I have developed um, through um, some pilot studies that we have performed. Okay, so COFRAG. Th this slide will really help you understand what COFRAG consists of. Okay, so it is a complete framework. It is not just taxonomies. It is not just infrastructure, it is not just heuristics, it is all of these, plus it contains processes um, which um, I define as um, including both methodologies and models. Okay? So COFRAG is what every scientist studying anti-gravity um, needs in his or her toolkit. So I'm, I'm going to go into more detail about this later on in the talk, but this is the workflow when you are using um, COFRAG. So um, you, the um, investigator, um, will need to um, gather your data and um, your models together, and you will plug them into um, COFRAG. Um, you will also need to um, through some pilot studies, develop a phase compensation, and um, you will need to select um, a theta statistic. And all of that um, will be plugged into COFRAG, and what you will get out of it are um, artifacts that you can um, uh, preserve and present in your empirical studies, and um, you will come up with a knowledge base. And um, the results from different COFRAG studies can be combined all into one knowledge base. Okay, so um, let me present some definitions here. Um, it is essential that you understand these to um, be able to really follow COFRAG. Um, so first I want to talk about the phase variance compensation, um, abbreviated V sub EF. Um, so clearly, um, it uh, H of 1 EL um, is equal to, um, uh, this is uh, Einstein's famous equation over here, um, and it can be shown that the following relationship holds. Um, H sub 1 EL um, is equal to um, the differential coefficient um, times the phase variance compensation um, matricized with R, okay? And it can be, or it is left as an exercise for the reader that this is equivalent to stigma plus rho omega. Okay, 
Um, so moving on with some more definitions. Um, oh, oh, I see. I'm running low on time. Um, let me skip ahead here. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, we can discuss that after the talk. Um, we can take that offline. Um, okay, so empirical results. Um, uh, yeah, I really don't have time to go through these. Um, but um, suffice it to say that CST performs 99% significantly better um, than all baselines at all sparsity levels. So, yes. Lots of good results here. Okay. So, um, in conclusion, um, we propose a novel approach to formalize key features, attributes, and characteristics of anti-gravity. Um, our framework um, has the advantages that it leverages existing models and methods, okay? And it bridges the gap between um, the state of the art and the state of the practice. Um, from our pilot study, which I'd be happy to discuss with you at the break, um, our initial results are indeed encouraging. Okay, future work, um, we need to involve and evolve and grow the framework. Um, we need to expand it so that we can um, also um, have a, a dialogue, hello, have a dialogue um, on related con uh, concepts, um, the other antis in physics, and um, we need to compensate for the uh, phase variance. Um, finally, I just want to mention a little pet project of mine um, because, as we all know, um, manual detection of gravity is tedious and error prone. Um, and so we need a way to, um, uh, to, to, to uh, detect this um, more automatically, more efficiently, um, and also to let the average person be able to detect the detection of gravity at any moment. So this has broader impacts on society. Um, we propose to develop an iPhone application or app. Um, little previous research has been done on iPhone apps. Um, just a few things, in fact, came up on Google Scholar. Um, so we think this area is wide open for further study. Um, so just a survey of uh, related work. Um, and I would like to thank everyone for their attention. And in the interest of time, we'll take questions online, offline. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Dr. Genovese. Um, Let's see. Uh, for this next segment, uh, we would like to request uh, some audience participation. Um, can I um, have a volunteer? Um, we have a DDR pad up here. Um, you'll have to take off your shoes and uh, uh, do a little moving around, so um, you need to wear comfortable clothing. Uh, any volunteers? Uh, ah, yes. So you've already got safety glasses. Thank you. Uh, where am I? Here am I. Okay. Okay. Uh, yes. Let the festivities begin. The impossible is often the untried. The impossible is often the untried. 
shoot for them, shoot for the moon. Shoot for them, shoot for the moon. Even if you miss, you'll land among the stars. If you can dream it, you can do it. Whether you believe you can, or you can't, you're right. Re -re Replace every, I can't with, I can. Try not, do or do not. There is no try. Triumph is just umph, added to try. If you can dream it, you can do it. I, I, I love you, baby. I, I, if you can dream it, you can do it. I love you, baby. 99% of the failures come from people who have the habit of making excuses. Excuse is the mother of failure. Excuse is the mother of failure. I found it easier to get rich than I did to make excuses. If you can dream it, you can do it. I, I, I love you, baby. I, I, if you can dream it, you can do it. I love you, baby. Failure is no accident ever. 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 Never. Never. Winners never never. Quitters never never. Never. Give up. If you can dream it, you can do it. I I I I If you can dream it, you can do it. If you can imagine it, you can create it. If you can dream it, you can become it. Life has no limitations, except the ones you make. You can't climb the ladder of success with your hands in your pocket. We have um, a short film uh, we found, uh, a, a film reel uh, buried in my front yard, um, uh, probably from the, uh, what would you say, like early 1800s or so? Thank you. 
So I'm not sure where they were going to drive that moving truck because there weren't really a lot of uh, paved roads during that time. Um, but uh, that shall remain a an unsolved mystery. Um, let's see. Up next, um, we have some more DDR. I think. Marbles.qtc screen. Excellent. Thank you, Karen. Good morning. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Karen. Good morning. Good morning. Wonderful to be here. Thank you, Karen. Good morning, Karen. Good morning. Wonderful to be here. Thank you, Karen. Good morning, 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 Karen. Good
small business is the big entrepreneurs business. The small business, small business, business, small business, 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 business has long been the backbone of the economy. Of course, running. everyone shall. Of course, everyone shall. Of course,
Антикмейте в Америке. Uh, we have one more uh, piece for you this evening. Um, this one's going to be hopefully performed on the Nint Nintendo, provided it actually works this time. We shall see. Yes.
Sunday afternoon, 25 years after the World's Fair. My folks and I drove to Seattle, our Subaru, in District Fair. My first time to the Emerald City. I couldn't wait to see everything in sight. I took the tour of the Federal Science Pavilion and the elevator to such great heights. My folks and I sat down to dinner in the eye of the needle. I ordered space noodle pasta with Alfredo sauce. Behind the chair where I did sit, I took some bread, I took a pill, and then turned around and said, Oh no. The window by me was a different one than before because this restaurant had a rotating floor. I wanted to scream, but I couldn't speak, to run after my retainer, but I felt too weak. 500 feet up was our downfall. 500 curses on Seattle. Who knew the thing to come between us would be angular velocity? my teeth straight. Custom molded with precision. I got you on prescription. In pi times diameter over rate. You'll be back, but it's too late. I tried to linger over cake. The mom said it was time to go. The window by me was a different one than before. Because this restaurant had a rotating floor. I wanted to scream, but I couldn't speak. To run after my retainer, but I felt too weak. 500 feet up was our downfall. 500 curses on Seattle. Who knew the thing to come between us would be angular velocity? I had kept you right next to my plate, wrapped up in my napkin, perhaps, you might not have met this fate. The tour guide 
she took our picture. I smiled, but you weren't there to glitter. When I see that picture, I remember the last day we were together. Riding down the elevator, I just abandoned my retainer in the sky. In the sky. In the sky. In an imperceptibly slow orbit around all those tourists eating dinner, you circumnavigate the sky. You circumscribe. Five hundred feet up was our downfall. Five hundred curses on Seattle. Who knew the thing to come between us would be angular velocity? Five hundred feet up was our downfall. Five hundred curses on Seattle. Who knew the thing to come between us would be angular velocity? Um, as you may be able to tell, that is the end. Uh, uh, we are Project Rory. Um, thank you for having us here, and see you next time.